students in this video we will know about improvement in food resources so all of you know what food is right every day we need to have food in order to have energy to be safe and away from diseases and to have immunity and also to do some work so that is a general known thing that all of you have studied from the lower classes and we get this source of energy from the food that contains certain vitamins minerals proteins and other certain vitamins that we get from the minute quantities that's essential for our day to day life we'll start with the video now so as i told we need food in order to grow and to develop and there are certain cells that go to wear and tear so there is certain repair system in our body that happens without our knowledge in our daily life so these cells die and new cells needs to develop for this purpose we need to take in food it also protects us from certain diseases they provide energy and also helps us to carry out say certain activities like running jumping swimming and also the everyday activities or the work we can see that only green plants are autotrophs autotrophs are those organisms they can prepare their own food so non green plants they are known as heterotrophs including animals so we can say that humans are heterotroph and we are involved in certain activities of farming and rearing of animals for our food requirements so where do we get carbohydrate from so certain examples are here it's wheat millets rice maize sorghum so you can see that we get carbohydrate from these sources that we eat every day let's understand from where we get proteins from it's the gram peas certain amount of green gram pigeon pea lentils all types of grams black gram pulses we get fra proteins from and also certain saprophytes such as button mushrooms also contain a good amount of protein so we can see that what we eat we also require certain amount of fat that needs to be stored under our skin and also to do the everyday metabolic activities so let's understand that uses of oil we use oil in our cooking and our daily life that is got or we get it from certain seeds so like soya bean seeds gives us soya oil mustard seeds mustard oil is extracted groundnuts groundnut oil is extracted sunflower seeds sunflower oil is extracted and nowadays we call it as refined oil lot of extractions and impurities are removed from the oil coconut we get the coconut oil and also certain seeds that give oil that is edible will provide us the required amount of fats so next we will see that we get certain vitamins and minerals from the vegetables fruits and the spices that we use in our cooking so they are certain examples are given here so spices like black pepper black mustard clove cinnamon all these are certain examples of the spices that give us vitamins and minerals vegetables as you can see has as cucumber celery beetroot radish turnip 
cauliflower, eggplant. Eggplant is also known as the normal brinjal. So let's come to the fodder crops. What do you understand by fodder crops? The crops that is given to the livestock, livestock or the domesticated animals. So you can see that oats. So you might have known oats uh, through these years that oats are having a good amount of fiber content that will help us in proper digestion and keeping our intestine in healthy condition. So you can see it's not only the oats is given to livestock. Nowadays we humans are also having the oats. So Sudan grass and bursim these are the fodder crops that we give it to the livestock or the domesticated animals. Next we'll uh, come to the crops that is grown based on the certain conditions or climatic conditions. So let's understand what is photo period. Photo period is the duration of sunlight that a plant gets for the process of photosynthesis. So growth of plants and flowering plants both are dependent on the sunlight. So based on the amount of sunlight required, crops are divided into two types. So what are they? They are carif crops and rabi crops. So you can see some of the examples of carif crops. They are rice, maize, jowar and pulses. So groundnut, cotton, all these come under carif crops. So what is rabi crops? They are the wheat, barley, red gram, potato, mustard. These are some of the examples of carib crops and rabi crops. They are dependent on the sunlight. So the, based on the amount of sunlight, they are called as carib crops and rabi crops. So let's understand about what is a carib crop. So carif crops, these crops are grown in rainy season. Rainy season that is between the months of June to October. The crops that can be grown in between the month of June to October, they are known as carif crops. As we had told that examples are paddy that is rice, soya bean, pigeon pea, maize, cotton, green gram and black gram. Next coming to rabi crops, so crops that is grown in winter season from the month of November to April are called as rabi crops. They are wheat, gram, peas, mustard and linseed. So next we have known about the crops that can be grown in certain seasons and also based on the photo period or which basis how much sunlight is required for the crops to grow. So it's not only requirement of the crops that they should grow only with the help of sunlight but how we can improve the crop yield. So let's understand the improvement of crop yield. So crop improvement can be done or the yield the percentage of the amount of the crops grown that is yield that is given can be based on improving the variety of the crop, crop production improvement that is uh, production in large uh, quantities and also protecting the crop against certain climatic changes and also the infections by the insects, pests and mites. So let's see about crop variety improvement. It's based on that normal crops cannot, some of the crops cannot withstand in certain different temperatures or climates and the yield also depends on the genes. So based on that, the technique used here to improve the crop variety is hybridization. 
so hybridization is crossing between genetically dissimilar plants so what does dissimilar plants uh, they have given example of two grape plants so one might be of the color the other might be of the sweetness so these two when crossed will have the offspring that is developed the young ones that is developed the next crop that comes up will have the characteristics of the color and also the sweetness in a single plant so you can see that scientists are studying the implications that is the gene flow between cultivated crops and how wild varieties are different from the cultivation that we humans are doing based on that they are studying with respect to the wine cultivation that is grape wild variety is the top right and the california white grape as well as bottom left crop radish so bottom right is the wild radish so based on these certain genetic studies are going on with the scientists they are trying to study what is the different characteristics that can be seen in crop cultivation it can be either grape or radish or any other crops that the genes of two different varieties can be crossed so that a new plant that is developed will be having both the characteristics that is about improvement of the crop variety so what does interspecific hybridization so you can see that interspecific hybridization is so specific rice varieties two different rice varieties african and asian rice they might be having different characteristics one which will be drought resistance the other will be having a high yield so these two will be crossed so that they will be tolerant in the next generation so oryza sativa that is uh, the asian rice that is they are resistant to lodging and high lodging is water resistant and also high yield potential so they give lot of high yield more amount of rice comes up in asian variety so what is that is relevant in oryza glabirama that is african rice is they are drought tolerant they can even grow with less amount of water and they are highly resistant to diseases and weed suppressing so when these two varieties are crossed they get the best of both the species that is nerica rice so this is a diagram or a picture representing the intergeneric hybridization that is two different genes that has been crossed and both the characteristics have been developed in the offsprings so in order to grow crops we need to select proper good healthy seeds so what is the conditions that is required to select a seed so seed so should be selected in such a way that they give higher yield then they need to be resistant in biotic that is normal natural and also drought resistant environment they should have resistance to both the environmental factors that is natural and uh, artificial environment resistance they should have and also they should be able to mature in a shorter duration of time than taking long duration of time and they should have wider range of adaptability that is they need to be able to grow in any conditions or climatic changes or the temperature changes happen also these crops should survive then desirable agronomic characteristics so what a crop should yield that is if you are growing wheat that wheat should have good 
quality and also improvement in the quality and the quantity is desirable so these are the points that needs to be seen for the seed selection so next we will know about crop crop production and management so how we need to produce a crop and how we are going to manage the crop without getting affected by any of the external and internal factors so you can see here the crop requires certain nutrients water so what are the nutrients that is required that is certain micronutrients and micronutrients are required by the plant that is the crop so macronutrients uh, that is nutrients required in large quantities for the plant growth they are nitrogen phosphorus potassium sulfur calcium and magnesium so you can see the roots and the soil provides we need to provide with certain nutrients that is known as npk that is nitrogen phosphorus and potassium along with that we need to also provide or the plant needs to get sulfur calcium magnesium in a large quantity and also micronutrients these nutrients need needed by plant in very small quantity that is iron manganese copper zinc boron and chloride so you can see here that with proper amount of nutrients and the water to the plant the plant getting enough oxygen that is getting enough carbon dioxide and releasing proper amount of oxygen and they are able to pro provide us or they are able to generate or manufacture carbohydrates proteins vitamins and oils with respect to the food that is required and that is helped by the carbon dioxide they receive and the proper sunlight they receive they are able to synthesize oxygen and also synthesize carbohydrates proteins vitamins and oils in the form of food when they are able to get proper nutrients and water that is micro and micronutrients you can see that certain deficiencies of the plant if they are not able to get proper nutrients so what happens to the plants so you can see that the green color of the leaf turns to pale yellow color and you can see the change in the shape of the leaf and here it is uh, deficiency in manganese here uh, you can see the leaves uh, getting curled up and you can see that how it is getting changed because the deficiency of sulfur here it is deficiency of magnesium and deficiency of calcium almost withering so next we'll come with uh, uh, the topic that is manure so manure is prepared by decomposition of animal excreta and plant waste they are known as organic manure without any chemical added so you can see what does manure do they increase the soil fertility and also improves the soil structure and also it helps in the proper growth of the plant so what is the biological material used for the preparation of the manure are compost and vermicompost they are the two types of manures that is here you can see the earthworms being added and the compost are the garbages or the vegetable materials that is scraped out that is the outer layer or peel layers of the vegetables also can be used as the manure that is the plant paste here you can see that along with the vermicompost that is you are using the soil to become more fertile by the use of earthworms so let's understand what is green manure so it is a specific term that is used to describe crop varieties that are grown and turned into soil to improve its overall quality that is once the yield or the crop is taken off 
the plant that is remaining is left over there and this for after a long time it becomes the green manure so examples are grass mixtures legume plants when we mix together the grass mixtures and legume plants they become the green manure without any other chemicals used so let's understand what is the difference uh, between manures and fertilizers so manures are natural material fertilizers are artificially prepared that is commercially produced plant nutrients these are the nutrients that is man made are known as fertilizers manures are were prepared by decomposition of animal excreta and plant waste so it is uh, actually naturally prepared so manures are not nutrient specific so they might uh, be lacking in certain amount of nutrients so it is bulky what is the difficulty that manures face it's a uh, huge in quantity and very difficult to get it transported fertilizers are nutrient specific because the uh, keeping in mind of the development of certain plants uh, the nutrients such as micronutrients and micronutrients are added together in certain ratios to make it into fertilizers and these fertilizers and the, are in the form of powder and they are very easy to transport so what does the manures do actually they are bulk and difficult to transport but it improves the soil structure fertilizers cannot improve the soil structure manures are not water soluble and it takes a lot of time by the plants to absorb the water but fertilizers are water soluble it can be easily dissolved in water and it can be absorbed by the plants easily so what is the difference uh, between uh, the manures and fertilizers commercially that is uh, manures are cheap that is we can get it by the common waste that is animal excreta and plant waste uh, getting decomposed but artificially prepared commercially produced plant nutrients are costly so you can see here spraying of the fertilizers so that completes this topic so uh, this video will be continuing in the next part keep watching thank you once again